Hi, I'm Lieutenant Thomas Dixon, and this is Volatile and Aesthetic Pharmacology. Despite widespread clinical use, current understanding of the molecular and cellular mechanisms of general anesthetic action is incomplete. This critical gap in the pharmacology of one of medicine's most important drug classes not only impedes rational use of anesthetics, but also hinders development of newer agents to selectively achieve the desirable endpoints of anesthesia with fewer adverse cardiovascular, respiratory, and neuropsychological side effects. Volatile anesthetics currently in use may be classified into three basic categories. Note the color coding. Halogenated ethers, isofluorane, a fluorinated methyl ethyl ether, sevoflurane, a fluorinated methyl isopropyl ether, desfluorane, also a fluorinated methyl ethyl ether, varies from isofluorane by the replacement of a chloride ion with a fluoride ion. This variation has dramatic effects on stability, vapor pressure, and solubility with obligate changes in potency. Halogenated alkane, halothane, is not currently used in developed nations, but may be used in developing countries given its low cost, high potency, and availability. It is noteworthy that halothane and isofluorane became available in the 1970s at approximately the same time but halothane fell from favor due to safety profile. Gaseous anesthetics include nitrous oxide and xenon, which is not currently used, but widely considered an ideal anesthetic agent for future use if availability, cost, and delivery obstacles can be overcome. The foundations for the study of anesthetics were laid in 1899 with the formulations of Meyer and Overton, who concluded that all chemically indifferent substances that are soluble in fat are anesthetics. Overton concluded independently that the relative affinity to fat on the one hand and water on the other will decide their relative potency as anesthetics. This portion of the theory still holds true today. Meyer Overton led to the thought that lipids were the primary target of anesthetics. This was later modified with the discovery of the anesthetic interruption of a lipid-free protein of the firefly enzyme luciferase by Ueda in 1965 prompting a movement to a protein-centered theory as the primary target of anesthetics. The potency of inhaled anesthetics for immobilization was the subject of a study by Egger and colleagues during the 1960s, and defined one MAC value as the minimum alveolar concentration of an inhaled anesthetic at atmospheric pressure required to prevent movement in response to noxious stimuli in 50% of subjects. This was a watershed event for the research and use of volatile anesthetics, as it became a scale by which to use anesthetics in the clinical arena and by which to study inhaled anesthetics. Current theories. Combining what we've learned from x-ray crystallography, molecular modeling, and structural and functional data Research indicates that inhaled anesthetics bind in hydrophobic cavities formed within proteins. The lipophilic hydrophobic nature of these binding sites explains their adherence to Meyer-Overton correlation. We cannot forget the complex interactions between the patient, the volatile anesthetic, and other pain or anesthetic adjuncts that exist uh, in the conduct of each anesthetic. This table represents a few important physical properties of volatile anesthetics. Each of those currently used uh, in the United States will be discussed and others are included for perspective. Boiling point and vapor pressure are linked and speak to civility, stability of the liquid form of the anesthetic 
at standard temperature and pressure. For example, the saturated vapor pressure of desfluorane at room temperature is 664 torr, or 87% of one atmosphere. This means that desfluorane is nearly boiling at room temperature. As such, desfluorane must be stored in a special vaporizer that must be heated and pressurized for use. Another aspect of the two that carries importance in general storage uh, is that one milliliter of liquid is roughly equal to 200 milliliters of vapor. Thus, storage capacity is generally 200 times the volume uh, with liquid as compared to gas. This is especially applicable to nitrous oxide, which is stored as a liquid uh, as made possible through pressurization. The closer the gas to atmospheric pressure, the closer to boiling point at atmospheric pressure. As the vapor pressure of nitrous is 39,000 torr, it must be pressurized within a metal cylinder. And as the pressure is released with use, nitrous seeks physical equilibrium by vaporizing within the cylinder, making it near, nearly impossible to measure remaining volume using standard board on gauges. Minimum alveolar concentration has already been defined. Note that higher MAC percentage indicates lower potency. The percentage that may be selected using the vaporizer uh, is not reflective of target tissue concentration until the alveolar concentration is at or near equilibrium with inspired concentration. As inspired gas moves into the lungs to the alveoli, the concentration uh, creates a gradient from the alveoli to the blood. Initially, diffusion into the alveolar capillary blood will be highest, as the gradient created by absence of anesthetic in the blood uh, facilitates diffusion from alveolus into the blood. The body tissues reach saturation in a fashion similar to floodgates arranged in series, filling the vessel-rich group first because of vastly higher blood flow, then muscle, and finally the fat group. Factors affecting speed of wash-in include inspired concentrations, the time constant of the delivery system, which is related to fresh gas flows and circuit volume, dead space, alveolar ventilation, cardiac output, and the functional residual capacity of the patient's lungs. MAC is highest in the neonatal period and gradually decreases through adolescence. MAC then decreases after 40 by approximately 6% per decade. MAC may decrease with concomitant use of medications or substances that depress the CNS and certain metabolic derangements. MAC is also additive and 52% nitrous oxide in combination with 0.5 MAC isofluorane, uh, for example, would equal 1 MAC. Note also that many medications uh, must be considered as variables uh, in understanding of MAC, such as narcotics, IV anesthetics, and other CNS depressants, which, uh, as noted above, will decrease MAC. Nitrous oxide must be used at such high concentrations that the gradient created with the alveoli uh, or within the alveoli will also speed wash in of other anesthetics significantly. As such, nitrous is often used as an adjunct to facilitate mask induction as well as speeding onset of other anesthetics. Blood gas partition coefficient, simply put, is the ratio of anesthetic divided between blood and gas of equal volumes. Blood gas co coefficient, uh, partition coefficient, or BGC, indi indicates solubility. And as we know from Meyer-Overton, higher solubility correlates with higher potency. Note that halothane's BGC is 2.4. Converted to percentage, the volume of gas that dissolves in blood as compared with the gaseous state will be 240% higher. 
So if one milliliter of halothane is in gaseous state, using only these factors, one would expect 2.4 milliliters of halothane to be dissolved in the blood. This concept may require a visual provided by Stolting. At equilibrium, implies that partial pressures have equalized across the two mediums, blood and gas. See in this example, equal volumes of blood and gas are provided for an easy illustration. 2% desflurane is derived from 2% of 100 mLs, or 2 mLs. Note that the BGC of desflurane is 0.42 and that 42% of 2 milliliters is 0.9 milliliters. As such, desflurane is the least potent of the potent inhaled anesthetics, but as blood moves through the capillaries of the vessel rich group, only 42% of the anesthetic is dissolved in the blood, leaving 58% available for diff uh, diffusion into the target tissues. This provides the fastest onset per unit of volume of any of the volatile anesthetics. The desired effects achieved through use of volatile anesthetics are amnesia, analgesia, immobility, and unconsciousness. Amnesia, consistently demonstrable in greater than 0.5 mAC, is widely considered to be mediated through the hippocampus, amygdala, mediotemporal lobe, and possibly through other areas of the brain attributed to memory and learning. Analgesia, occurs through attenuation of afferent nociception. Immobility, which is dose-dependent and measured by classic MAC, is mediated through spinal cord central pattern generators. Unconsciousness, usually at levels less than 0.5 MAC, which probably involves cortical structures, uh, the thalamus and reticular formation in the brainstem, uh, which is associated with consciousness and arousal. The effects or side effects of each anesthetic may vary somewhat with the unique molecular and chemical properties. These variations, discussed later, contribute to the enigmatic nature of the volatile agents. The generally accepted primary effect site receptor of potent inhaled anesthetics is the GABA-A receptor, Though intended for peripheral, uh, excuse me. Though unintended or peripheral effects occur uh, through a number of other sites, as shown above in the chart from Stolting. In contrast, gaseous anesthetics effect site is primarily through inhibition of NMDA receptors within the CNS. Note that green represents strong potentiation. Dark pink represents strong inhibition, light pink is some inhibition, and white represents no activity at the receptor site. Several desired neurological effects are designed in the preceding slides. Volatile agents also increase cerebral blood flow through vasodilation. At the same time, there is a decrease in metabolic activity within the brain that as evidenced by a decrease in amplitude and increase in latency of the waveform of the electroencephalograph measuring brain activity. Thus, cerebral metabolic requirement for oxygen, CMRO2, is decreased. This phenomenon is referred to as flow metabolism uncoupling. Under normal conditions, the brain is able to autoregulate its blood supply within a range of approximately 50 to 150 millimeters mercury mean arterial pressure. The hindrance of ability to autoregulate may become important with patients with intracranial hypertension. Under mechanical ventilation, this is less of an issue, as cerebral vasodilation remains somewhat sensitive to CO2 despite volatile anesthetic usage. So, hyperventilation to maintain slight hypocarbia may offset loss of autoregulation. Nitrous oxide increases cerebral blood flow with mild increase in CMRO2. Use of IV anesthetics, potent inhaled anesthetics, or opioids will offset these effects. 
Inhaled anesthetics may alter CSF production and reabsorption as well. Isoflurane.